What is up, you two? Back in the garage again. <clears throat> Yesterday I managed to get the Evo Sporty Motorhome and this AOD out from the table underneath here. Uh, I still got a Chevy T5 down there too, but I have no use for it. I just don't want to get rid of it yet. Unless something comes up, that won't really work with the Ford stuff unless I get into switching a ton of stuff, I think, on the tail shaft housing. Seems like a lot of work when I can just pick up a Ford one, but AOD is what we're here for today. Uh, I started, I yanked the converter out. It was just loose sitting in there. Converter's already drained. So that's sitting down underneath the table. But I want to do a shift kit and I need to replace this linkage arm with an adjustable one. So I still have the stock TV valve on the bottom, the throttle, uh, throttle valve and the regular shifter all of that will get flip-flopped for the new low car style one i didn't get the actual low car one it's like an amazon chinese one fingers crossed it works if it doesn't then we will be ordering other parts but time to start digging into this so basically i gotta take this uh i'm gonna put it on its side yank the oil pan off and then make a big old mess so i ran to the shop this morning got a bunch of the pig mats because transmissions leak everywhere. So I'll get you guys set up on the tripod and adjust this thing and see how big of a mess we're gonna make. You know the best way to go about doing any of this yet. So we're just gonna uh, tip this thing on its side and see what happens. So one more here. I don't have the fill stick in. That's over there somewhere. So. Hopefully this mat will catch most of it. And there's the geyser. If I remember correctly, this trans was welded. So you guys can see cases welded on the inside and the outside, because I messed that one up and dropped it. I split the housing. So it was welded. I drained out as much as I could prior, so I don't know how big of a mess we're actually gonna make here. But this should at least give us access to the drain pan. Honestly, not as bad as I thought it would have been. I should probably just grab a pan. That would make sense. What do I got? When in doubt, use a cookie sheet, right? Not very deep, so hopefully there's not that much trans fluid still in here. This is going to be a permanent messed scenario. These stupid old transmissions. Oil everywhere. And then I got to remember because this is part metric. This is where things kind of started transitioning from all standard stuff to metric. So I got to find some metric tools, which I don't have a lot of. TV linkage, I guess. So these, if I remember correctly, are actually somewhat directional. There's like a car one and a, a column one and a floor shift one. I don't remember which is which. I'm missing a couple bolts. We'll yank off all these pan bolts. Then we're gonna make a big old mess when we drop this. I don't really care how long I leave it to drain, but it never fails. There's always more fluid somewhere. This has definitely been redone at some point. Just looking at it. Lots of RTV. This is an unknown condition transmission too, so I don't really know. Fingers crossed everything works, but I'm not expecting the best here. There we go. Let me 
that was coming. Of course, it's gonna land right where I put all my bolts. Why would it go anywhere else? Filled the tray pretty quick. but definitely not the worst thing I've seen. At least we get a nice parts tray. I could be actually smart and put a pig mat in there first. Let's do that. So on the parts tray, basically, just throw one of these in here. Let that do its job, soak up some of this crap. And we'll have a cleaner-ish area for the rest of our stuff. Nice little nest. Now we'll yank the filter off, make it more of a mess. I have to rearrange my drawer here for metric things. Eight mil, why not? We have the 10 out. I'm assuming there's gonna be a lot more of those. If you are looking for an instructional video, this is not the place to be, because I've never done this before. This is all new to me. Three bolts on the filter. That last one I pulled out is actually one of the valve body bolts. So we'll have to come back to that one. There's a lot of stuff going on in these. I did get a very thorough looking book of instructions, so I might have to kind of keep checking that. But I know for this linkage, there's a good amount involved. I gotta like separate this nut back here and some springs that I gotta make sure stay together. I kind of researched this a little bit, but again, I have no idea what I'm doing in terms of transmission stuff. So let me bust out the big instruction manual and give that a quick little look over before. I know I gotta pull the valve body, but I don't know if I need to take out all the linkage stuff first. Just look up a quick little thing. I think I found a couple issues already. So this right here, I just watched a video from uh, Monster Transmissions. I think he does a ton of stuff on the AODs. But this linkage right here, this is your TV line pressure fitting right here, that should be free. However, there should be a connector on the back side of this, I thought, as far as I was aware. On the video I just watched, there's a little bracket here that basically causes when you hit your, let me see if I got that valve. Here's the TV adjuster or the TV rod. When you actuate this, and I don't know if this is just a different model, but right now, let me set you guys down. This right here is stuck. Which is not what you want. So that's getting stuck behind it because there's a linkage that's supposed to connect like a little pin with a bolt that holds this to the TV adjustment. So this right now is free, and that should spring back on its own, which it's not doing. So I'm definitely going to need to figure out how that is all connected, or how that's supposed to connect. So hopefully this is a better view. This part with the pink on it right here. And there's a hole here for a little bracket. That bracket should be what engages this. So at rest, we're right there. But if I try and adjust this at all, it just moves. So there should be a connection between this and this little valve, which adjusts my line pressure. So that's good to know. That's messed up, because it should spring back and forth just like that and move this accordingly. So that's gonna be an issue, but we're not gonna stop there. So let's keep going. Okay, when I was just showing you on the TV linkage, I can actually show you a little bit better. I forgot, when I pulled this outer nut out, 
this whole shaft assembly dropped down, which is where that was getting stuck. Now, if we actually adjust this, I can bring this back up. Let's see how I can do this. While you guys are right there, like that. This is roughly the position that that should be in when this upper nut is tightened down. It's gonna hold that shaft through. So as this goes back and forth, it springs back. Now I know in the videos that I was watching, there's like a little spacer and a bolt right here that goes through this, which I'm assuming will stop it from dropping too far in on the detent, but once the bolt's on, that should be okay. So I might not have to get that spacer. I don't really know for sure. I just gotta make sure that this is free and moving. So it should go in, snap back, no drag, no issues there. I now need to get rid of the gear detent. So another eight mil. Long one, which will go there. And now, the shifter portion's free. I gotta get to this nut on the back side here to separate this from the shifter body, or the shifter body from the trans. So I gotta loosen this, it's 13 16 if I remember correctly. So let me grab some tools and try and get that out. I don't have a 13 16 open end wrench at the house, so this is gonna go on pause for a little bit. Run to the store, grab one, or run by the shop and grab one. I'll stop by the shop first, but 13 16 is bigger than what I have here, so. We're gonna put this on pause for a minute. Once I get that linkage bolt out, I will be able to pop the valve body out. However, since I'm dead in the water until I go get tools, what I'm thinking is I'm going to take this and loosen all of these so I can drain a little bit more oil while I'm waiting on the wrench. So there's 24 of these. should be all of them. So what we're gonna do now is, I know there's a couple long ones I gotta pay attention to, some short ones. These are the shorties. These are all the same long length. Couple more, man, there's a lot of these. All right, so these are all loose and free now, which is kind of about as far as I wanna go because I don't wanna lose anything here. So I'm gonna wait, try and get that linkage out. When we come back, I'll turn you guys back on. Instead of leaving those in, if you notice, I have of the 24 bolts, I got four here, three here, one here. So these eight are the shorty length ones compared to the long ones that go everywhere else. So this is more of a me reference than a you reference, but there's eight short ones. So the three, four on the face, three on the back, one in the middle, and all of the rest of them are gonna be that longer length bolt. So I'll make two piles, the short and the long ones, just so we know where all of those go going back in, and then we'll keep tearing it along on this thing. So yank all of these long ones out. We got long ones, we got short ones. We do not want to lose any of those, so make sure to try and keep those a little bit more organized. Now let me wipe my hands down again like I'd have to do after touching anything on this, and then we'll look at the valve body. I got a little ahead of myself. I yanked all the bolts. There is one detent spring on this TV rod that we were pushing back and forth that sits right down here. Let's see if I can pull that back up for you. This detent spring right here goes into this groove right here. So that sat there. Uh, once I pulled all the bolts out, 
I realized that I actually don't need the linkage off until later when I pull this shifter linkage out, so I'm gonna leave that. But with all the bolts out, I just wiggled it a little bit, saw that this was coming free, popped the spring out of this groove to take the pressure off of that one, and now I'm kind of jammed up on this TV cable right here. So we're gonna jam this back, like so. And out comes the valve body, like so. So I'm gonna set this somewhere where it's gonna drain a little bit more before I lose it or lose anything. And then we should be good to go. And that's actually gonna give me a lot more room to get a wrench on the shifter linkage. So it kind of worked out a little bit better. I was overthinking it. Sometimes you just start taking stuff apart and figure out there's better ways of doing it. I don't have a 13 16 wrench yet, but I might have enough room to put a crescent wrench on there. We'll find out here shortly. If not, I'll just wait and do it when I have the right tools, but might as well check and see. Man, where are my adjustable wrenches? This pin is really kind of the issue here. Definitely in the way. Oh, so adjustable wrench is always gonna be way too big here. So we gotta wait for a regular wrench for that, that's okay. But there's the inside of the valve body area and the diaphragms and all the other plunger things that I don't understand how any of them work. And here's the rest of the valve body with the gasket still on and I think there's supposed to be some check balls somewhere down in here, maybe one there. I don't know, hopefully I didn't lose anything. Okay, so I got the valve body off, which is good, but now I gotta clean up the bunch a little bit because the valve body itself it's gonna come up on the bench. Most of the work I'm doing is on the actual valve body, not on the transmission, other than the linkage stuff that I still can't do yet. So let me, I'm gonna turn this over, drain some more out from here, and then we're gonna get the transmission itself off of the bench, drain this pan, and then we'll just set the valve body up here. So the valve body's up on the bench now. I was gonna pull the trans and then I realized I don't really feel like lifting it. So that'll sit on the end of the bench, got some more pig mats underneath it while that's draining. And now, Move this pan farther over. We will start disassembling the actual valve body itself. Hopefully I don't lose anything. Okay, onto the valve body. We have a bunch of bolts all the way around here. We're gonna pop these out and this last one. And that should allow me to take the top plate off. So I got an eight mil on the corner. And a bunch of little tens. Gasket and plate. Try and pull this off as one assembly for now. Like so. Where am I gonna put this one? I have a lot of cleanup to do on that thing. Now we gotta start grabbing all these check balls. So let me grab a magnet and a pick. We got one down here on the front. Oh, I just yanked a spring up on accident. Not sure where that one came from. Right there maybe? We'll have to figure that one out. We got another one of the springs right here. I'm trying to see if there's any more. And then we got the check ball. We got one here. Not steel. Not one, two, three. Oh, 
four. one down here I believe that's all of them so I got six check balls five small ones one big one and those two plungers I'm fairly certain came from right here and the other one is right here I'll have to double check that but seems right to me so our valve body is now separated let's read some directions and what they want us to drill holes in okay so this is drained for a little bit the only other thing I want to do right now is remove the shifter because I think what I'm going to do is actually bring this and the plate back to the shop start pulling the gasket on there and put this in the parts washer because everything's covered in trans fluid and I know I'm gonna have to lay out the new gasket and drill a couple holes in here. There's like a cut back eliminator with a little plug that goes in somewhere in here. I don't know that, oh, one more check ball. Whoa, that was almost bad, huh? Now I got seven check balls. That's what you don't wanna do, by the way. The one stuck on the cover here. But uh, this needs to go get cleaned up at the shop. Once I get all the ATF and gaskets off of here, this will be much easier to lay the template or the other gasket as a template out to drill. So all of this will go back, but in order to transport it, this, oh, that can stay, can't fall out. I thought that was gonna come out, but just wanna get everything prepped, make sure I don't have any loose or floating parts before I transport this back over there. Okay, so that's good to know. Last check ball, I don't know where that came from, so I'll have to figure that one out later. But it did stick to the plate, so shouldn't be too terrible. And at least there's enough information on these now. And thanks to YouTube, wonderful place and a wealth of information. So makes an expert out of people that don't know anything, like me. So let me go degrease all of this, and I'm not sure when we're coming back. It is Father's Day, so don't have all that long to keep playing in the garage. Got to go meet up with Dad. It is the next day. Uh, I got about yay far on the transmission. I did not have a chance to go grab that 316 wrench yet, so I'm going to do that later on today. And essentially, I got everything laid out now. I'm going to pull this clip off on the... Uh, this is a shifter engagement, so I'm going to pull this off, yank this out of here, and then this and the plate are going to go with me to the shop today. Throw those in the degreaser, scrape all this gasket off, and get all of this prepped and ready to drill some holes, and hopefully not ruin it indefinitely. Alright, decided to take a quick field trip with you guys to the shop. Sorry, super bright outside and not that bright in here. So here's the mess we're dealing with, chemical stripping, all of this gym equipment. More of those boxes ready to go home. But in between all that, I got a couple things to get blasted and coated. Finished up this nice CB750 frame. Pretty excited for that one. But we got the valve body up here now. So ran this in the degrease tank. Got everything drying in here now. Redid all the plates. That one. And I got the pan filling up. Uh, and then I got all the bolts and hardware in here as well. So I think what I'm gonna do is potentially degrease that and we might actually just powder coat it because I'm shooting satin black here later on today. So I'll just clean up the pan and have a nice fresh coated one that's gonna be super clean and not covered in oil. Here is the degreased and recoated trans pan and valve body. So the valve body is completely cleaned up and degreased. It's been sitting and drying on a pig mat all day. Um, I went through and cleaned up all the hardware too. So we are in pretty good shape for all of that. Everything is really nice and clean. No more trans fluid. Look at that. I can touch parts and not be covered in trans fluid. 
yay for me. All of this, not at all necessary, but it makes my life way easier instead of having to grab a shop rag every time I touch something and never actually get clean. Normally I'll mask them off, but for my own stuff, I usually try and push the limits a little bit and see what happens, because if one of my things blows up from something I did, that's on me. I take accountability for it, but now I know. If this works perfect and I don't have any issues, I'm gonna keep doing them that way because that saves a ton of time and masking and money and materials. So we're gonna go back to the house real quick and I'm gonna throw the trans parts up back on the bench. Well, we are back from the shop. We've got the oil pan and the covers and all of the brackets completely cleaned up. If you notice the oil pan now, or the transmission drain, uh, transmission pan is a bright super mirror blue, that is fresh powder. I coated the entire thing on this one. Most of the time for customer work, I will mask all of this off. However, this is an adjustable shift kit and I plan on probably making a bunch of alterations to this over the next, I don't know, however long I'm messing around with it. So if, uh, there was ever an opportunity to do a test and tune or a trial and error assembly, this is it, which is why that whole thing is coated. If I drop that pan at some point and all of the powder's flaking, I will recommend that you guys don't do that. But in my opinion, I got a nice even coat. It's completely wrapped all the way around now. The powder is not gonna mess up with the gasket surface whatsoever. It's just a matter of how well it's gonna hold up with actual ATF or not ATF on a Ford, but Mercon 5. Is it gonna hold up to the detergent type fluid? We'll find out. So that's where we're gonna leave off on this one. I'll probably be back out tomorrow. I gotta play around on this XLCH tonight. So this is gonna wait a little bit longer on the transmission shift kit install. We'll be back when we're uh, ready to work on that again.